let's go over pointers in C++. Now, pointers are just another variable. They're just a data type, actually. But they're just a, a variable, like an int, or a string, or a float. Um, a pointer is just another variable. <clears throat> but rather than holding an integer or a string, it's going to hold an address. It's going to hold an address in memory. And that address is likely going to be referencing some other piece of data. So pointers give us the ability to indirectly manipulate data. And this is especially important when you don't have a name for that data. For example, if you have an integer named value, um, you can assign a pointer to it and you can alter that value without ever referencing um, the value's name. Same thing in an array. So uh, let's get into this. Let's draw it out and see how this is going to come together. So I mentioned that pointers are just a variable, and a variable is just a little piece of memory that is carved off and reserved by the processor to hold some data. And we all know about you know integers, floats, et cetera. Um, all of those data types uh, will uh, hold a value you know, consistent with that data type. Now, a pointer is just simply going to be uh, the same type of a variable, except it's holding rather than a 10 or a 10.5, it's going to hold an address like something like that. I'm just making something up here, uh, but some hexadecimal uh, address uh, is uh, what it's going to contain, and that points to a very specific location in memory that could either uh, be pointing to uh, another data variable, or it could be pointing to uh, an array or an array element. Okay, here we've got a variable x, and it's storing 10. It's an integer. So that means somewhere in our RAM, um, we've got this little slice of memory carved off and reserved for x. Um, integers are usually <clears throat> uh, four bytes in most systems. And the idea of a pointer is we're just going to set up another variable that's just going to point at it and just keep its finger right on it. So creating this variable here called pointer um, is uh, we can initialize it um, as a pointer to an integer. So that would mean that when we actually code the declaration statement, we would say int star ptr. And this tells us that it is a data type that is <clears throat> a pointer to an integer. Or in other words, it's holding the address of the integer. And we want to get into the habit, just like when we initialize, um, say, counter variables or accumulator variables, we want to get into the habit of always initializing our variables to something. And what we'll do with pointers is always just initialize those to the null pointer, N-U-L-L-P-T-R. And that's just good stewardship, good housekeeping. It makes sure that a pointer is actually pointing to something and not just dangling in space awaiting assignment. Now, um, when we point to this uh, memory location of X, the way we assign that is, well, since PTR is a pointer to an integer and holds an address, um, we have to give an assigned pointer an address, and we do that with the address operator. So PTR equals ampersand X. Again, ampersand is the address operator. It will give us the address of X, not X. And that then means our data types are going to be consistent. Uh, address X gives us an address, and PTR needs an address. So this is going to uh, point to it just fine. <clears throat> and what this gives us then is the ability from this point on in our code, now that we've assign the pointer to just point at X, um, we can now access and manipulate X without ever typing the variable name exit, because we can just use our pointer references. So let's take a look at some code now uh, that will kind of put this into action. 
All right, here is some uh, code, and uh, this will be posted if you're watching this for a class. Um, <clears throat> and it is just uh, going to start with the basics, and we're going to kind of build on this as we go through. So we mentioned before in this code here, um, I've got X assigned to 10, and these are the pointers basics. If we were to run this, um, just take a look at these first two lines here. <clears throat> uh, we see that the value of X is, in fact, 10 but the address of X is that hex number. And we get that again right here in our, um, uh... here, pardon, pardon the pause there. I needed to shift browsers um, so I could get my uh, drawing marker here. And what I was saying is that this operator right here, the address operator, the ampersand, is what is giving us this exact uh, output here. Our next thing to take a look at is, well, how can we indirectly manipulate that variable when all we have is a pointer to it? Let's suppose, for example, we don't this is dynamic memory. I'll get to that in the next video. Uh, but let's suppose that we just created this memory real quick. There's no way to give it a name. And we still need a way to reference it. That's where pointers really come in handy. So here we have this, um, this pointer pointing to 10. Now to modify it, we use the indirection operator, PTR, with an asterisk in front of it. That asterisk is the, uh, the indirection operator. Uh, it is <clears throat> going to sort of take whatever's at that address and just give us the value. So another way to look at this star PTR syntax is whatever this is pointing to, give me that value. So the star makes us be able to talk in values and no longer in addresses. So if we set star PTR then is 20, then we're actually assigning the value 20 to whatever we're pointing at, and that becomes a 20 right there. And then if we were to ever count then X, X would be 20. And if we were to ever uh, output just PTR, that would give us the address. And if we ever were to output star PTR, that's gonna give us the value of whatever we're pointing at, and that's gonna be a 20. So let's take a look at code uh, that supports this. Okay, this code now is doing exactly what I just wrote. Um, we are going to reassign whatever PTR is pointing to as 20. So we would expect to see then when we output X here uh, in line 14, that we would see 20. If we output <clears throat> the indirection operator, star PTR, that we should see 20. Um, here, you know, this shows that you can actually do math on a pointer. This is just saying whatever that's pointing to, add 100 to it and output it. It's not changing it, but it's just saying, all right, well, whatever it is, I'll put 100 plus, and there it is. Uh, and then that is showing that at the end, um, X is going to remain 20, just like we said, because we aren't actually adding 100 to it and storing it that way. We're just adding 100 to it and displaying it without modifying the variable. So these, uh, the output over here in our console is exactly like we were predicting. Um, there is the reassignment of X showing uh, its reference either through X or through star PTR through the pointer. And then this part here is showing how um, the variable is remaining the same, even though we appear to add 100 to it. Now there's an interesting relationship between array names in C++ uh, and pointers. And that's because essentially they're the same. An array name is actually just pointing to the first element of the array. So if you were to output um, just the name of the array, some array, uh, you won't get, like in Python, you won't get the whole array listed out. Uh, instead, you will actually get the address of the first byte of the first element in that array. So it's just interesting that with uh, with arrays, um, 
uh, they are kind of pointers already, already pointing to that first element. And that means that that's why we never have to use reference variables when we're going to pass an array up to a function, uh, because they're already being passed by reference. We're already using pointers. Uh, let me show you some code uh, that will demonstrate this. All right here we are. Here's some additional code right down here. And um, what we have is first a constant here, size six. I've got a numbers array just with some numbers in it. And this code here is going to show that if we were to output just the array name, uh, we'll actually get an address. But if we dereference it and say, give me whatever element is being pointed to, then we will get the first element. And you can see that over here in our output, we first got the address of the array. And then second, we got the first element by dereferencing just the array. Now we can also dereference um, just uh, number sub one and it'll give us the same thing. All right, here's some code. Um, let me clear the console <clears throat> and you'll see when I run this, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, you'll notice here that when we created this array numbers, um, that I'm also going to create this pointer to that array. And actually, to be a good citizen, I should initialize this to the null pointer. There we go. Because later we'll assign it. And we do that right here. Um, in line 30, we assign array pointer to um, the array numbers. And note that this assignment is a little different than the assignment that we had up above where we had to assign x to the pointer uh, using the address operator. And note here that we don't have to do that. And that's because uh, numbers uh, is an array and that's already dealing with pointers. It's already referencing um, like it just drew the, the first element, uh, the, the address of the first element. So. We don't have to use that address of operator here since the address is already included um, just by default because we're using an array and using an array name. And to show that here then, um, this is just output showing uh, that if I output just array PTR, that gives us the address. But if I dereference it, it is going to give us that first element, uh, array PTR sub zero. And you know we could kind of continue this. We could do... Uh, let's type uh, or just output um, array pointer sub two to get the third element. And this will give us that second element, uh, the, uh, the third element, I should say, the index number two, which is a six. And we do get that here. So we can see that um, we can actually use array nomenclature Um, with a pointer. We can use the subscript and an index uh, just like if we were dealing with the actual array name. And that gives us a lot of flexibility and, and versatility, uh, as we'll see uh, now coming up. And I'll show uh, that exact thing. I mentioned that pointers give us a lot of flexibility and versatility, uh, and that's true. One way in which uh, it, we've got flexibility is that we can use our standard array index syntax, and it'll apply to a pointer uh, that's pointing to a uh, an array. So we can use the original just you know square brackets using an index like sub zero or sub one, and it's going to behave the same way. Um, so what I mean by that is looking at this example here, um, I've got a pointer called P6. That's a programmer defined variable name and it can be anything you want. It doesn't have to be PTR, it can be anything. And here I am making it point to some array. Uh, this is the actual C++ statement. And you'll remember we don't need the address operator here because some array is in fact already an array and already dealing um, with uh, with pointers. 
and some array is actually defined by just the address of the first byte of the array. So here in, in this, in a normal standard for loop, and let's suppose it's just one that's gonna crank out the index variable i, uh, we can reference p6 sub i uh, to step through that array, just like we could also use some array sub i, and that would also let us step through that exact same array. So this gives us uh, versatility, flexibility, uh, and you don't have to remember too much. However, in more advanced applications, it is going to make, make more sense um, to use a different syntax to uh, access these array elements. And that syntax is just this pointer syntax. So it's just sort of rearranging um, what we had over here, just sort of rearranging it. There's the P6, there's the I. Um, we have to put a star in front of it to dereference it. And what this is really doing is, well, we know that, uh, let me go to red here. We know that P6 is pointing to right here. And as we go through that for loop, I is gonna increment from zero to one to two. Um, the processor will actually add um, a one or a two or a three, you know, wherever we are in the loop. And it also, you know, the processor is smart enough to know uh, the size of uh, an integer. And it will just then increment uh, that many bytes over uh, to get the next element. So that's what this does here. Um, and again, you know, using this, it, it can get a little bit uh, uh, complex to keep the syntax straight. Uh, so just remember, you can always go back and forth between these two uh, as often as you want. And here's some code that will uh, show that. Here I've got a couple of ways to display the array contents. It's going to be in this part of the code right here. I'm just going to build a script as we go on. And then you'll have that as a reference uh, if you're watching this as part of a class. All right, I first mentioned that we can use standard array syntax with a subscript to step through that array. And you'll see that when we do that down here, we in fact get the that numbers array with all of the numbers. But here's the syntax now showing um, the alternate way, and that's using the pointer syntax. And this is just going through a for loop, I increments each time, and we're gonna dereference whatever array pointer is pointing to plus the I offset, and that's gonna take us to that right element. And you'll notice that the output here is exactly the same as if we used the standard array syntax. Now there's a third way to iterate through a, an array, uh, and that is just by manually incrementing the pointer. And we can sort of do that um, uh, sort of like if we were in a while loop and we had an index variable i, and we had to manually increment that. It's sort of the same concept. So here's that code uh, that I'm talking about, a normal for loop, and of course, uh, we'll have a range variable in there, but we'll never use it. Um, and what we've got here is if, if we, of course, star uh, or dereference whatever array pointer is currently pointing to, it's going to give us that value. So when we start, uh, we know that uh, a or array pointer is pointing to that very first one, or I could call this P6. Let's call that P6. Um, star P6 is pointing to the very first element of the array. But we can actually increment that. Um, if we were to output that element with star P6, great. But then we could go P6 plus plus, and that will increment the pointer to the next element. And it does that just by knowing integers are four bytes. So it calculates four bytes and moves it on over that way. So this is an additional way of showing uh, or uh, of uh, uh, incrementing a pointer in order to traverse a list. And then here's a uh, here's that. Um, I've got the code in there showing that you can increment a pointer here, just like you know uh, any other kind of a variable. And that's it right there. We're first going to output uh, whatever array pointer is pointing to. You know, we're going to dereference it, and then we'll increment it.
And you'll see here in our runs that we got three identical results here with the three various ways of traversing that array then. Let's step through a practical example. Let's use a pointer to keep track of the highest element that is in an array. So here's an array, numbers, same one we've been using. And at some point I had executed this code here showing that we wanted to create a pointer called P6 and it's gonna to point to numbers. So what this does is it gives us a little pointer variable called P6 right here. And it's currently pointing to numbers, which we know will give us the first element of that array. All right, uh, I changed it to high, not P6, so it'll make a little bit more sense. Now we wanna step through this array and just make sure that high is always pointing to the highest number in the array. So we can start out by just assigning high the first element. And that's what this is gonna do right here. Um, whenever we assign an array name to a pointer, again, it's gonna just give us that first element. So right now high is pointing to the first element. Now at this point, we would just step through that uh, array with a for loop. So for int i equals zero, all the way up through the size, et cetera. Um, what we can do is uh, step through this, Every single time we'll have an element in our hand, number sub i, we can access and reference it you know, with standard um, uh, nomenclature in this case. And if that number happens to be greater than what high is currently pointing to, well then let's just make high point to that other one. So what do I mean here? Well, with, with this, we'd have an if statement in here saying, all right, if numbers sub i, and that's where we're currently at, if that's greater than high. Now, remember, we can't just say high here because high is a pointer, and that's going to give us uh, a data type of an address. And here we're trying to ask, is this integer greater than something else? And we've got to have data type parity there. So we've got to make sure that we're giving it an integer. So we've got to dereference that. And now this will say, whatever high is pointing to, that's what we're looking at. And is that greater than uh, or less than or greater than? So if this is true, if the number we're currently looking at then is greater than high, then we can just reassign high. We've got to give it an address. So whatever numbers sub i is, we're going to give it that. And since we've got to contain or uh, have it contain a, an address, then we will use the address operator and that will give us then the element. So uh, let's run this and we'll see here in our code, let me do a clean run. Uh, we see here that our code did find uh, that highest number of eight. And uh, how do we do that? Well, let's just step through it. The first time I is zero and high is pointing to two. Then the next time through, um, i is now one. We're gonna be analyzing numbers sub one, and that's a four. So number sub one, which is a four now, four is greater than what high is pointing to, the element is a two. So that is true. So now we're gonna assign high, the pointer high to whatever numbers sub one address is. So now high is, instead of pointing here, high is now pointing to that one. And we'll see that this process will continue. It'll point to that one, it'll point to that one. When we get to here though, the comparisons though will now be, well, is eight greater than five and is eight greater than three? And we know that those are all false. Uh, so we won't get any uh, reassignment. So uh, here is the code that will help us understand this a little bit more. Um, here, I've got this code block showing an integer high just pointing to numbers, so that points to the first element. And then here is that if statement in the middle of our for loop, 
and it's just doing that comparison. We've got the array element in our hand here, and we've got the high element here, and we're just comparing the two. Here we have a value 15, it's just an integer. And let's create a pointer to it. So I will do that over here. I'll just create a little pointer. Uh, I don't know what to call it. Let, let's see what, uh, P1, P1 wins, that's just fine. So we'll create a pointer P1 and it's just gonna point right to it. <clears throat> uh, we can do that of course with code. Let me do that in red. Integer. There we go, an integer pointer called P1. And I'm gonna assign it uh, whatever is in the address of the variable value one. So our scenario now is we wanna just triple this value and we wanna do it indirectly. So we'll never actually use the, uh, the name value one and we wanna do it with a function. So passing a pointer to a function is just exactly that. We're gonna pass an address. Uh, it's almost identical to when we would pass by reference. Um, we can pass a variable by reference. <clears throat> And what this does is uh, when we send it to a function by reference, um, the processor is not gonna create a copy of it to send to the function, but instead that value is being operated on live. And it's the same concept here with a, um, uh, with a pointer. So I've got a pointer P1 here initiated, initialized this way. And if we wanted to call then the triple function, we would just send that P1 pointer to it. Now, the argument has to match, of course, what we declare as the parameter uh, in the parameter list. And here we are saying it's got to be a pointer to an integer. And that's exactly what we have here. P1 is, in fact, a pointer to an integer. So it's going to work. So here is our function. And it's saying, all right, whatever val is here, whatever it's pointing to, give me the value of it. Um, I'm going to just multiply it by three. Or you can use a combined assignment operator there. Now we don't have to return anything from this function. That's why it is a void function. And we don't need to because we're operating on the data directly rather than operating on a copy of the data, which would normally happen if we just send a value to a function. It's being sent by value and we get a copy. The original is always left uh, uh, unmodified. So let's take a look at the code here. All right, it's this part here. I'm going to indirectly triple a value using the pointer. And we start with, there's our value of 15. Uh, in this next line, I'm going to create a pointer to that value. And you'll note that we could have been good citizens and done this um, We could have done that and we'd get the exact same results as you'll see here, exact same results, um, but you can combine those to save a little bit of coding. Now, we're gonna send that pointer to this function triple value and that is it right down here. And the data types match since we're sending a pointer to an integer and then here is the code to just simply triple it. And we would see here that value up in the main function should be 45. And when we do run it, uh, we do get a 45 down here. So it has not only been tripled, but that tripling has stayed uh, persistent. And it's evident in main that that value has in fact been uh, modified without um, even touching the word value one. Now there's a second way that we can do this as well. Um, as we remember from uh, when we would pass by reference. Let me show you how these are almost equivalent. So here's that code showing reference variables and how we're getting the same results. Uh, if we remember reference variables, <clears throat> um, those are variables where we send an address, just like a pointer. So here is, first of all, a triple two function. And it, rather than using a pointer, it's just going to receive 
uh, the value, the variable by reference. And what this does is it, rather than the function creating a copy of the value and sending that to the function to be manipulated, um, it's sending the actual value itself. So any manipulation in the function is persistent. It's gonna be apparent uh, and it permanently changes it. So it shows here how when we do run it, we did get the result here, 135, and that means, well, whatever we sent to it, value one, um, it was 45, and this is showing that it, it in fact did triple that. All right, here's some code that's just gonna sum up an array and use pointers. So here's a function that I've created, total array. It receives the uh, pointer to the array, to that first element. We're gonna step through it and just sum up the elements using a uh, an accumulator variable, a subtotaling variable. And it looks and feels very much like a normal array would. Matter of fact, the syntax is identical. So that gives us kind of that flexibility and versatility uh, that we can use the, the well-known syntax to traverse this array, just like uh, we could use the pointer syntax. Now note here, I've included that we can get the same results using um, this alternate uh, syntax for pointers. And there the run is exactly the same. We get the sum of 25 uh, and that's using this syntax right here. We can also bust that up. into two statements and it'll give us the exact same <clears throat> results. And there's our sum, oh wait, no, it didn't do that. Come on. All right, there's those numbers again. There we go. Here's the corrected syntax using that pointer um, syntax to um, access the element. And then every time through the loop, we offset that by um, i. And the processor, of course, multiplies i by the size of an integer and just moves that all, all across. So there's our way to total up some numbers. We're just going to send this uh, to the function total array. And we send it down here by pointer and we get the result. And then just as a reminder, um, I do have up here our function prototypes. And as a reminder, you should always use prototypes um, because they allow us to put our main function defined first um, rather than having a bunch of function definitions and you have to hunt down and try and find a main function definition. All right, I hoped that I hope that this helps and uh, and good luck on your assignments. And pointers should not be hopefully as scary now. All right, good luck.